If you know, you Yo. know. Welcome back to Honest Spears. Hey. Where we try. Before you buy, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to still buy this anymore. This I'm actually... I think, I, I think it's still available. I think there's a few available. I think they're still available. Uh, what was our very first podcast yeah, ever? Brady? Very first podcast ever that was way too long, like 28 <laughs> minutes long. <laughs> we did three bourbons on it. We had no idea what we were doing, but we were stoked. Yeah. And, and we had fun. Yeah. And if you've been following since then, you're a true homie. Yeah. Um, but Thank you. We really wanted to come back to kind of our roots and where we started. Quartz Mountain. Quartz Mountain. Quartz Mountain, my friends. Uh, shout out to Randy and, and Darren, Darren Kyle. Darren Kyle. Uh, Quartz Mountain, oh, again, yeah. is a local distillery in Vancouver, Washington. Father, son. Father, son. These guys know really what they're doing, yeah. man. Um, it's small. They have a little shop right when you walk in, but if you walk straight through, it's like the distillery's right there. Right there. It's not much to tour, but, you know, Randy would be happy to talk your ear off for about an hour or more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Darren is the guy that you kind of see out and about, delivering to restaurants, delivering to pouring at the stores. ALNA, yep. yeah, pouring at ALNA, doing all sorts of different things. So, um, this has been their newest special release, but just I dropped like three weeks ago, right? Yeah, three or four weeks ago. But uh, Jason, I'll let you kind of tell us a little bit more about it. Well, yeah, so they did a couple of different Sherry Cast releases, and this one is. The one that's finished in Pedro Jimenez cast. So PX Sherry, um, it is, this is actually bottle number 34. Uh, I asked for that specifically because my birthday is 34. 48.5% uh, by volume, 97 proof. It is aged two years. It is a single barrel. And again, finished in Pedro Jimenez casks. So um, we went to the release for it and I loved it and bought a bottle. So we're going to try it and evaluate it for you guys. Um, and we've probably talked about this before, but bourbons made in the Northwest, definitely really 99.9% .9 of the time don't taste like they came from the Midwest where they've been doing it for 200 years. So, but having said that, you can find some really stellar, um, we, I had a rye once from Montana that blew me away and, and so on and so forth. So it definitely has that young, young grainy note, um, but not in a cardboard bad way, not in a right. watered down way. Uh, we actually helped proof this. Yes. Uh, you and I and Matt Long. And, and a few others. And a few others. Yep. Kind of helped pick the proof. Uh, they gave us a couple different samples and we said, have at it. And we wrote a little cute love notes to each other. It was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah, this this smells pretty good, man. Uh, for whatever reason, and I always tell both Randy and uh, Darren this that their stuff right away, right on the nose, has a distinctive nose. Like it does. There's there's nothing else that smells like their stuff, and I, I think it's the process that they're doing. It's almost like well, they well, get that. It's Vienna. almost like Heisenberg and his <laughs> you know his crystal blue. Well, it's so there. pure. It's so clean. It's so yeah. Uh, intricate in the process and they're doing that um is it is it a malt to dry yeah no. the vienna barley vienna barley that's it that's mm -hmm. it yep that that might be what it is because it, it kind of smells like an oatmeal cookie yeah yeah i mean it, it, it smells a little bit like granola yeah but this one is definitely kind of a cut above some of the other stuff we've had in the past because of that sherry finish so yeah good color a little bit darker um, a tinge reddish, which is funny because the, uh, the the label is is red for Christmas. In, in bottle, pretty dark. All right, cheers. cheers. If you know, you know that this is really good. My favorite thing about this is that while you still can kind of taste that that youth right on the front. That immediately gives way to a rich, dark, dried fruit, um, sort of middle and finish. Yeah. Right? I would say that this is really close to like one of the better things that can come out of the Northwest, which is shocking because it's local to us. This yeah, is literally 10 minutes right down the, the road. Yep. Um, it's, it's kind of has some dark toast, uh, dark roast coffee notes. 
And I think that's why... And for, you don't like coffee. Yeah, I think that's why for me that, like, this isn't necessarily my favorite. Yeah. Um, but you have to put all the factors into play and the fact that it's local and the fact that it's a... You know, I, I believe it's a two-year product that's finished for six months-ish. Darren and Randy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I think it was about six months. I honestly don't remember how long it was in the sherry barrel. Golly, I want to say it went in in uh, early spring, and they pulled okay. it in about November. Well, yeah, just okay, like so three six weeks to eight ago. months. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah um, complexity. Where are you at? Where are you at with this one? It's actually surprisingly complex. Again, I say surprisingly just because our experience with local bourbons specifically, um, not super complex. Uh, a lot of the ones we've had. Um, I think and you get more like very distinct fruits, like the whole way through and through. Yeah. Like the sherry is like, hey, we're here. We're from Spain. You love me. <laughs> yeah. PX again is the is the actual name of Pedro Jimenez is the name of the grape and uh, we might have talked about this in another, yep. another episode but anyway it's I'm gonna go three and a half on complexity like it's one of the more complex local bourbons I've ever had for sure I think for local it's a three and a half yeah for the grand scheme it's a three okay that's fair uh, drinkability I uh, I mean. I just got this two, three weeks ago, and it's almost half gone. So drinkability for me is at least a three and a half, maybe a four. I'm going to say a super drinkable. three because I kind of have to be in mood for something like this. Yeah. Uh, but it's very drinkable once you get into it. Yep. Um, and value. Value. This is like 70 to 90. Something Some, like that. I was going to say 80. So, 70 um, to 90. Yeah, the value is a three. Um, and the only reason I say that is... I think that um, I've seen this time and time again with local distillers, uh, meaning Oregon and Washington. <clears throat> they're pricing high because they need to make money. They're they're not. That's fair, man. I mean, fair. they're Run young this. distilleries. They've only been around about what five years now, four, yep. coming into year five. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of startups have to start off with vodka uh, and gin. Yep. It's something that they can turn out quickly. In their case, hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. Because <laughs> they started during COVID, so yep. they couldn't make anything yep. um, except hand sanitizer. And I still have a trunk full of it. There you <laughs> go. There you or a go. box in a my box. trunk. Yeah. Um, anyways, hey guys. Uh, yeah, support local. But not just support mm -hmm. local because it's local. Support local because this is a good product. It is. Um, this and they've is, got other stuff. Yeah, this product is a, a lot better than... A lot of things that you can find on the shelf. I would say 50% of the things that you find on the shelf. That's um, true. It, you know, the, the value might be a little bit higher, but you have to take into account all of the things um, that are going into it. Um, so, yeah, great guys. Good local guys. Um, a lot of people love their four grain. Their um, four grain I think you can still nowhere. get that. And there's a cast strength that I also have. They did a maple finish. They're going to be coming out with a stout beer barrel finish and yep. we got to get a little sample sample before it's ready and it's i think it's gonna be stellar so yeah. look for that yeah hey guys i appreciate you tuning in and um i believe this is our new year's episode so happy new year and uh appreciate you guys uh tuning in all year long thanks and, for supporting us yeah kind of be impatient as we figure out what honest spirits looks like going forward so we'll see you next week and happy new year peace